So now we're going to discuss correctness of algorithms. So when you're writing like a, a computer program, right, we run into some error. So the first type of error is a syntax error. And these are usually quick to find because when you start running the program, it'll give you an error immediately. But the other type of error you could have is a logical error. And these are harder to, to de detect, mainly because the program will still run, but within the program there's some kind of logical error, so it's not actually giving you what you want. And so we have this problem that how do we find our logical errors? Are we sure that our program is actually doing what we want it to do? And so one problem is that we can look at our input data and we could have an infinite amount of input data that we could plug in or even if it's not infinite, it could be unmanageably large. And so we can't plug in every possible value into our program and make sure it spits out the right value. So we're going to look at programs or we're going to use the phrase algorithms where there's some kind of input and there's some kind of output. So we're going to talk about the precondition. This is going to be your input and your post condition. That's going to be the output. So let's look at an example. Let's say my algorithm is going to compute a product of non-negative integers. So what would my precondition be then? What did you input into this algorithm? Well, you put in two non-negative integers, right? So we need variables. Well, I'll go with M and N, the input variables, M and N are non-negative integers. And our post condition, the output variable, so let's call it P, equals the product, which is M times N. So there's our precondition and our post condition. Our input, we input into non negative numbers. Our output is the product. So now we want to talk about how to prove that an algorithm is correct. So we want to talk about proof of algorithm correctness. So how are we going to prove it? Well, if the precondition is true for a collection of values for the input variables, and if we execute the the algorithm. So if the statements 
of the algorithms. are executed, then the post condition is also true. That's what we need to prove in order to prove that an algorithm is correct. So essentially what you kind of do is you think about breaking down your algorithm into steps, into pieces. And so you're into these assertions and then statements. So assertion one would be your precondition. And then there's some kind of algorithm statements, some steps that have to be done. And then there's maybe an assertion two, and then another set of algorithm statements. Depending upon how complicated your algorithm is, there might be a lot of these steps, but anyways, there's, there's this final, so you have assertion K minus one, the last step of statements, And then your final assertion, assertion K, will be your post condition. And so what you can do is you can break down your algorithm into these like pieces here. And you can think like in just this chunk, Assertion one would be your precondition, and assertion two would be your post condition. So you're going to break it into these in between stages here. So let's sum that up. For each i between one to k minus one, prove if assertion i is true and all of the algorithm statements between assertion i and assertion i plus one are executed and the next value assertion i plus one is true so this is really the connection between what we were talking about before mathematical induction and programming because because this feels just like an induction like we were doing earlier we're assuming assertion i is true and then we're going to show assertion I plus one is true. So that's the connection there.